Do you know the five different kinds of animation? How about what their advantages are or the different job options that are out there? We're going to cover all of that and more coming right up. Hey, what's up animators? Rusty here from Rusty Animator. And in this channel, we create weekly videos that teach you how to animate at a higher level to quickly reach your dream job in movies or games faster uh, without massive college debt. So here you'll find a mix of how-tos, tutorials, um, live events, and guides just like this one. So if you're new here uh, and you're an animator, consider subscribing. Now in this video, let's talk about the five different kinds of animation, their advantages, their disadvantages, and the different career options that are out there for you. Number one is stop motion. In stop motion, you take a physical object, say a puppet or even your own body, and take a series of still images with a camera to create animation. And man, does it look cool. advantage of stop motion is that it's uh, very organic and naturally appealing. There's nothing that looks quite like it. And the main disadvantage for it is that this medium is the most labor intensive. Like building your own puppet and changing it frame by frame as it goes across the screen can take a lot of time, even more than the other animation mediums. The skill level required to do stop motion is a 5 out of 5. It takes a lot of skill to know timing and spacing in your head and then just kind of shoot the pictures and have it be, you know, if you're going to do like, um, you know, like a Kubo and the two strings and do high quality acting, it takes a lot of uh, knowledge in your head about how to create that. Job availability with stop motion is a bit of a problem. It's a 1 out of 5. Uh, just because there's not that many studios that are offering jobs for it today, um, so they tend to be, you know, only like Leica or a couple other places and a lot of independent filmmakers that do stop motion. The second kind of animation, motion graphics. So motion graphics is very different from all the other mediums because it focuses on more interesting shapes and text instead of story and character, usually. Um, so usually you're moving uh, motion graphics elements around like titles or logos in, in just an appealing way. Uh, typically most of the work is in commercials, you know, marketing, advertising, and, and you know, doing movie intros and credits. The fun part is, is that this takes the pressure off. The animation doesn't require that it has to look super realistic, that it really, really obeys, obeys gravity and that, uh, you know, there's a lot of like subtle acting involved or anything like that. Uh, like you get in other mediums. It's just much easier to get high quality, cool results with moving shapes rather than, uh, you know, subtle acting. So the main advantage of motion graphics is that it's simple, it's a simple, straightforward medium. Um, the main disadvantage is that there's very little acting or storytelling. Uh, the skill level required though is probably two out of five just because of that lower barrier of character animation not needing Pixar level acting uh, makes a big difference in the skill that you need. Uh, and the job availability is, you know, I'd say three out of five. There's a lot of different ways that you could go with, with motion graphics. A lot of companies that aren't necessarily animation based that are requesting uh, motion graphics these days. The third kind of animation, traditional animation. Usually when you hear traditional animation, Disney is what first comes to mind, right? Or maybe Looney Tunes. So, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those. It used to be the dominant medium for animation, though today it's taken a backseat uh, for most animation productions. In traditional animation, everything is hand-drawn by page on real paper. How many drawings would you do? If you were, you know, animating on a feature film, there would typically be 24 frames or pictures a second, so 24 FPS. This means that you, have to, you would have to create 24 drawings for every second of film time. It's otherwise known as animating on ones, one drawing for every 24 frames, right? So naturally, to save time and stress, 
Uh, traditional animators found a solution for this early on back in the day. So they found out that they could animate on twos. So every two frames, they would just have one drawing. Uh, and this usually works for especially a lot of the slow action. Occasionally on super fast actions, you still need ones and you use interchangeably. The main advantage of traditional animation is complete creative freedom, okay? You're not limited by software or puppets. You can animate anything you can think of. So you can create, you know, your own characters. You can design any kind of background setting. You can invent any prop. Uh, you can just push the boundaries of animation and what it's capable of with your pencil. So that is a huge advantage. Uh, you know, you're talking about smear frames, you're talking about extreme squash and stretch, you know, uh, just making a really exaggerated animation is, is you know, all at your fingertips. The main disadvantage is that you must draw fantastically well uh, to, you know, create high quality traditional animation and there are a few jobs to choose from. Skill level required for the job is a five out of five, just because of that, that need to draw really, really well to do like subtle acting, like little blinks with the, um, you know, with eyes or subtle expression changes or even little, little movements with the body and really control all that by hand. Um, job availability is two out of five because there's not many studios that are requesting traditional animators these days. Disney, for instance, isn't hiring 2D animators anymore to come in and, and create animation for them. It's all on the computer. The fourth kind of animation, vector bitmap animation. This is like digital 2D animation, and it's pretty much the same as traditional animation. You're hand drawing all the animation, but you're uh, drawing digitally with software. The style is instantly different, but often more simplified than pencil and paper. In recent years with the growth of YouTube and social media, this kind of animation has become really popular. The main advantage of this medium is that it's less expensive. You don't have to you know, pay for all that paper that's, that's being done and the painting and everything. Um, the main disadvantage is that you're using software to mimic pencil drawings. So, so sometimes this can be challenging to, you know, get used to or to even just get the, the right look that you want, depending on the software. Skill level for the job is three out of five, just because you need to have that, uh, again, that same skill with, with drawing by hand. But typically the, the quality, the level of acting and the level of movement is much lower than, say, a traditional 2D Disney film. Job availability is probably three out of five. There's, uh, I think, a growing amount of, uh, of TV shows and projects that will need this animation, as well as uh, independent YouTube creators and things like that that um, you know are, are creating a lot more opportunities out there. The fifth kind of animation is computer animation. And as this is the most common form of animation today, you probably have already heard of it. Uh, but this is also where most of the jobs are. So studios of all kinds, you know, from huge ones like Pixar and Disney to small TV cartoon companies or game companies do computer animation. The unique difference with this medium is that you're manipulating 3D virtual puppets called character rigs to create animation. It's kind of similar to stop motion in that sense because you're using a, a puppet, um, but you're it's all digital on the computer, so you're kind of got virtual strings on this thing that you're moving around. Um, and the upside is that you don't need to know how to draw because you're just manipulating a puppet that's already been made by someone. Uh, but you're often also limited by what that puppet can do. And these 3D puppets called character rigs are uh, both the advantage and the disadvantage of this medium. So the main advantage, because you're using a, a virtual puppet, you don't need to know how to draw uh, you know, you're, you're just manipulating this guy around that's already been made and it's not gonna suddenly break shape unless you do something really wrong. Um, and the main disadvantage of this medium is that, you know, you're, you're again, limited by those character rigs and what the software can do. So sometimes if you're doing like a smear frame where you want to create a bunch of eyeballs and like, uh, uh, several different heads all in one frame, 
that can be hard to put that over into 3D. It can take a little bit more work or some other people to help you out. Um, it could also be something as simple as like a character reaching to put his hand on top of his head. Sometimes their ar arms are too short or they can't take the hat off or whatever it is. The skill level required for this job is a five out of five as well. Um, you need to know a lot about animation. You need to know about how to use the software to, to get uh, great results in the art as well. And this can, the, the quality can range. So sometimes the skill is in a five out of five depending on the studio you're at, you're at, but it can go all the way up to, you know, Pixar level where they're doing really fine-tuned movements and it just looks almost human-like. The job availability is also five out of five because this is the most popular form of animation today. It's not necessarily the best or the only way to animate or the only one that will survive, but all kinds of studios are doing uh, computer animation, whether it's games, movies, TV, uh, independent films, they all have it. So there's all kinds of options all around the world for you. Anim Q of the week. Which kind of animation is most appealing to you? And is it the same kind of animation that you would choose as your dream job? Why? Thank you so much for checking out this video. Subscribe for more videos just like this one. And if you haven't yet, grab the Animation for Beginners Epic Guide. It's a free guide I put together for beginners that want to know all about the best animation courses, the best software options, the best free Maya rigs, and so much more. You can grab that for, for free. Just click or tap the screen right there. Uh, and if you want to watch another video from Rusty Animator, just click or tap the screen right down here. Until next time on Rusty Animator, happy animating.